In this part of the lesson, we're going to consider elasticity. We need to take into account the price elasticity of demand of the product or service concerned when we are applying a subsidy, because the effects will be different in each case. Here we have a demand and supply diagram on the left showing a price inelastic demand and a demand and supply diagram on the right showing a price elastic demand. And that can be seen from the gradient of the demand curve. We're going to ask you to do a little exercise. So we'd like you to draw these two diagrams in exactly the same way we have. But please note that the in both diagrams, roughly P1 is at the same level in both diagrams. So they are roughly on the same scale. If you can do that on your diagrams, it will be most helpful. What we're going to ask you to do is to think about how a subsidy would affect each of these markets. So if we ask you to put a subsidy curve, so a supply plus subsidy, and roughly the same size per unit subsidy, so roughly the same distance in each case from the original supply curve. If you pause the video, add on your subsidy curves, and then restart the video, we can compare notes. So if you've now added your supply curves, hopefully we have something that looks like this. On the left, in the inelastic demand market, we can see that the subsidy has had a large effect on equilibrium price. And whilst it has increased quantity demanded and the equilibrium quantity, it is only by a small proportion because, of course, this product is not very sensitive to price changes. So even if we have a large price change, there will not be much increase in quantity in the equilibrium quantity. However, on the right, where we have price elastic demand, the subsidy has a strong effect on the equilibrium quantity from Q1 to Q2, but very little effect on the equilibrium price. We just see a small change between P1 and P2. And that is because this product is very price elastic. So in other words, it's sensitive to price changes. We would like you on each diagram now to shade, first of all, the total amount spent by the government. Secondly, the producer subsidy the amount received by the producer, and thirdly, the consumer subsidy. So we would like you to pause the video in a moment and to colour in those three areas. Please stop and think about the first one, the total amount spent by the government. We just need to be a little bit careful. Right, if you pause the video and do the exercise, I'll speak to you in a moment. What do you notice about the impact of the subsidy at different values for the price elasticity of demand? Let's have a look. So first up, we've asked you to put on the total government spending on the subsidy. So we know the new market equilibrium is Q2 and we know the subsidy per unit is the vertical distance between S1 and S2. If we take a line up between S2 up to S1, the original supply curve, and then back to the price axis, which is Q2, we find the total spending by the government. So the amount of this subsidy, the vertical distance between S1 and S2 times by Q2 gives us the total government spending. We can see that in the price inelastic market, the total government spending is significantly less than in the price elastic market. And we're going to come on to that in a moment, why that's the case. Of that green square, of that government spending, the producer receives some and the consumer receives some. So first of all, we're going to have a look at what the producer receives. So imagine that green square is still there. 
the proportion of which goes to the producer is above the original market price and out to the new quantity Q2. In both cases, have a look at the difference between the amount the producer receives in an inelastic market compared to a price elastic market. So the producer receives far more in a price elastic market. Let's have a look at what the consumer receives next. The consumer subsidy is found by looking at the difference between the price the consumer originally paid, P1, and the price they now pay, P2, times by the new quantity, Q2. So the yellow shaded area is the amount of money received by the consumer. We can see quite obviously in the price inelastic market, the consumer receives a lot more than in the price elastic market. This is because if the consumer is not particularly sensitive to price changes, in other words, price inelastic, they will need a significant price fall to encourage them to consume a bit more of that product. Whereas in the right hand diagram, we can see where the consumer is particularly sensitive to price. We only need a small price fall in order to consume considerably more. So this is a really important point when we're evaluating subsidies. So to make sure it's clear, we're going to ask you to fill in the blanks on the statement below. Give yourself a moment by pausing the video and then we'll go through it in two ticks. OK, so when demand is relatively price inelastic, the total amount spent on the subsidy by the government is much more heavily weighted towards producers and the consumers gain very little. In contrast, when the demand is pr relatively price elastic, the consumer proportion of the subsidy is much greater than the producer portion. So why is this important? Well, it gives us evaluation. We can now start thinking about which markets subsidies might be most effective in. So, for example, a small subsidy in a price elastic market may have a significant impact on the quantity demanded and thereby solving a market failure, perhaps much faster and more quickly and more effectively than in a market where there's price inelastic demand, where a huge subsidy may be required to increase consumption. And you can think about this in your data question that's given to you or in your exam question or in your homeworks and start judging whether or not the subsidy would be effective or not.